See, the more I've learned to praise in my life, the more I've seen victory, the more I've experienced God, the more I've seen the kingdom of God. Praise is such a powerful tool that God gives us. It really is. So Psalm 34, are you ready? I will bless the Lord. How much? At all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord and wait. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Well, that's a bit harsh. King David, let the afflicted hear. People who aren't in good circumstances, people who are having financial troubles, people who are having demonic oppression, people who are stuck in depression, people who are in chaos all week. That's the afflicted. And he says, let them hear me praise the Lord. Why? I think there's something that praise does in our life, don't you? I think so. I think so. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Come on. Both David and Paul, we think, well, they must be having an incredible experience with God. They must have just got a brand new house they must have just got a brand new car. They maybe they just had a, had a kid. They must be at a really high peak in their life. I don't think so. The Apostle Paul, he's in prison. He's in chains. Come on. He's in chains. Imagine that. In the dungeon, held under Roman guard, and he say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Come on. You can praise. That's why I love praise, because... You can praise whenever you want. Praise is a choice. Praise is one of the greatest expressions of faith because you can do it when you're in the pit. You can do it when when you're on the mountaintop. It doesn't matter. King David, he wasn't out ruling the kingdom and saying, looking through all all his, his great work and saying, yes, I will bless the Lord. No, he's stuck in a cave. He's meant to be ruling the kingdom, but he's been kicked out. He's lost his family. He's lost his job. He's lost his property. And he's stuck in a cave trying to be, and the Israelite army by Saul is trying to assassinate him. Wow. And he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise is incredibly powerful. I want to show you today how praise transforms you. Is that okay? It's not hard. It's not hard. The kingdom of God is for children. Amen? So I always say to people, if there's a teaching that you couldn't teach to a child, do you want it? The kingdom of God is for children. It's easy. It's simple. So we lay hands on the sick, they recover. We don't have to rebuke a hundred demons out of the sick. We don't have to to go around and, and do some mathematical formula. It's simple. Come on. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, in this world, you will have trouble, tribulation. Jesus says that. Oh, that's a bit harsh, God. You're saying I'm going to have problems. Yes, yes, we live in a fallen world. You will face problems. But he says, be of good cheer, praise. Why? Because I have overcome the world. I have. I have overcome. Not I'm going to. Jesus didn't say I'm going to overcome the world. He says, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Why? Because the overcomer lives in you. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. There is never nothing you can't praise God for. There is always something you can praise him for. You're one with Jesus. He's made his home with you. You have the spirit of God. You're saved. You're going to heaven. Jesus loves you. You're God's child. Come on. That's something to praise God about. Wow. We're getting somewhere. Psalm 1833. David says, I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise. Praise is really simple. We have all the, you know, all the lights. Uh, We we create all the atmosphere and that's amazing. We need that. But praise is really simple. Praise is based on God's worth in your life. That's what it is. I don't come to God with an agenda to have to praise. I come to him because he's worthy. Amen. God is worthy of my praise. 
He is so worthy. He's so worthy of praise. In fact, I would say that if there's people here and you struggle to praise God, you need a revelation of his worth in your life. That's the issue. The issue is not the enemy. The issue is you need a revelation of what Jesus has done for you, of his worth in your life. Come on. He is so worthy of our praises. Amen. That's why David and Paul could praise him in the pit, because God's worthy. It's not based on their circumstances. They're not thanking God for their circumstances, but they know that in the circumstance, they have a God who is worthy of praise. They have a God who's a deliverer, a redeemer, a lover. Amen. Amen. Come on. So praise literally means to boast in God, to rave in God, to show affection to God. Come on. I love that. In the Hebrew, you know, there is seven words, different words for praise. Uh, you'll, You'll enjoy this, Bill. Seven different words. Each of those words means to sing and to shout. So I'm sorry for all you quiet people in here, but praise means to sing and to shout. You have to make a little bit of noise to praise God. That's, that's biblical praise. Re- religion gets God stuck in a box. Oh, if you shout too loud, that's not God. Don't, don't be too radical. Don't, don't be too in love with God. That's for, the, that's for the people down the road. That's for that friend who's a little bit weird and just has a little bit too much faith. They just put God into a little bit too much of their life. Come on. No, no. Praise Praise is singing and shouting to God. Come on. The, you know, the, 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 the other four Hebrew words, think about this, they all involve moving your body. Oh, about a third of you looked happy there. There's some conviction of the Holy Spirit coming on the room right now. Four of them, that's over half, over half the Jewish culture understood that when you praise God, you give a little jump, you give a little shout, you move, move your hands a little bit, just move something when you praise Him. Yeah. Don't just stand there like a brick, like a doormat. I praise you, Lord. That's not praise. That's not biblical praise. It's not. If you want to get really biblical, if you want to have kingdom culture in your life, begin to break out in some radical praise. Come on. Woo! So praise affects three things. Praise affects God. It touches the heart of Father God when we praise Him. Praise moves God. He loves people who praise. Praise affects the devil. Praise is like stepping on the devil's head. Uh, Psalm chapter 8 verse 2 says that through the praise of children and infants, God establishes His stronghold against the enemy and he silences the, the foe and the avenger. That's amazing, isn't it? Uh, infants and children, they're, not to be harsh, but they're very weak, aren't they? They're not strong, big, strong warriors. They're very weak, but it's on their praises. It's on our praises when we're in our weakest point that God establishes a stronghold against the devil. Wow. That's a revelation from someone in the room. That's for someone in here. At your weakest point, you praise God and it establishes a stronghold. It steps on the enemy's head. It silences his accusing voice in your life. How does praise transform you? This is what I'm going to show you. And remember throughout all this, this all follows praise. So all these things I'm going to mention, you don't have to do them because as you develop a lifestyle of praise... These things follow it. It's really simple. All you have to do in your life is develop praise. It's like a muscle and you learn to praise God. You learn to develop it. Every morning you wake up, you praise the Lord. During the day, you're praising God. You're boasting in Him. You do that, these things will follow you. These things will follow you. They transform you. So Psalm 27, we're going to spend some time in this psalm. Turn with me there. This is King David Most scholars believe in this psalm he's about to be anointed as king. And so he's reflecting on what God has done for him in his life. And who knows that David was a man of praise. You look at the psalms, he was a praiser. If you struggle to praise, 
Read the Psalms because it gives you a language to express to God. It provides a framework for you. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That is one of my favourite scriptures. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So you notice King David, he doesn't say the Lord is salvation, though he is, isn't he? He doesn't say the Lord is light, though he is light, is he not? He doesn't say the Lord's someone else's salvation. He says the Lord is my salvation. He says the Lord is my light. It's personal. It's personal for David. Light literally means that God is his revelation light. God guides him. God shows him things to come. God shows him what's going to happen the next day. Salvation means his source. God is my source. See, David's a man of praise. And here's the first thing that happens when you develop praise in your life is it builds intimacy with God. Praise develops intimacy. Many people crave intimacy with Father God. Many people want to be intimate with God. They try and do a lot of things. I can tell you right now, an easy thing to do is praise Him. An easy thing to do is learn to praise God. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 1, his prayer for the church was that the church would know Him better, would know God better. And see, knowledge, it's not, knowledge is not just reading the Bible like a textbook. Knowledge is not reading this just to remember a scripture or to know more about what happened in biblical time, uh, in biblical times. I teach my youth this, but I teach them that this is an invitation to experience God. See, the Greek and Hebrew understanding, they knew that knowledge, it wasn't just up here. Knowledge was actually an experience of God. Knowledge always led you into an experience. If it doesn't lead you into experience, it will lead you into religion. The word is an invitation. So when I pick up the word and I read Matthew chapter 8, that Jesus, that the leper came to Jesus and the leper's full of shame and sin and comes to Jesus and says, will you heal me? And Jesus says, uh, yes, please, I'll heal you. Come on, not maybe, not uh, we'll see, maybe tomorrow. No, heals him straight away, places his hands on the leper. See, that is inviting me. God's giving me an invitation. When I read that scripture, he's saying, that's for you. That's my love. That's my healing power. And so he's inviting you to experience that, not just to read it, not just to know it as a story that happened 2,000 years ago. Praise develops intimacy. Psalm chapter 100 verse 4 says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise. Wow. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That tells me that praise is a gateway into the presence of God. There, There are intimate experiences you will not get with God unless you learn to praise him. There are intimate experiences you will never have with God unless you learn to praise Him. Praise is the gateway. Psalm 22 verse 3, He inhabits the praises of His people. If you want more of the presence of God, if you want to experience God in a new way, develop praise in your life. Come on. Become a radical praiser. Just step out a little bit. Just start to praise God a bit more. If you're down here, bring it up here. Come on, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 18 is talking about the glory of Zion and it says her walls shall be called salvation and her gates praise. Praise. How do you enter into Zion? What is Zion? Zion is always known as God's kingdom. It's where God dwells. Where does God dwell? In you. How do you unlock God's presence in you? You go through the gate of praise. Wow. Come on. Psalm 87. God says that he loves the, that he loves the gates of Zion more than any other dwellings of Jacob. Think about that. God loves the gates of Zion. What are the gates of Zion? 
praise. He loves the praise of his people more than any other dwellings of Jacob. That's amazing. He loves praise more than anything else. Wow. We've got to become a people of praise. I see radical praises being birthed in this house who will touch the heart of God in such a profound way that you will see the kingdom of God move in your life like you've never seen before. People who have been dry for years and years and years, once you make that choice to radically praise God, all of a sudden His presence will be unlocked in such a profound way and you're going to move in the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. Whew. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Did you get that? Rejoice always, always. Not, you know, only when I feel like it. Always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. I've realized this. But this is actually a key for your prayer life. Your prayer life is intimacy with God. Where is the prayer? Where's the petition? It's sandwiched right between the rejoice always and the give thanks continually. So whenever I come to God in prayer, I'm not coming with an agenda. I'm coming to rejoice. I praise Him. I let Him know that I love Him. Then I do my little petition. God, I need this. And then I give thanks. The majority of your prayer life should be praise and thanksgiving. Amen? Should be praise and thanksgiving for what God has already given to you. Maybe you feel like, see, there's people here. I know, I'm sensing it right now. There's people here and your prayer life has become a burden. Your prayer life has become really dry. Your prayer life has been, well, oh, I have to... I, just, I guess I have to pray to God tonight. Do you know what stops that? The presence of God. If, you're, if your prayer life is dry, it's because you're not feeling the presence of God in prayer. How do we get more of His presence? Praise. Praise. We enter His courts with praise. Amen? Yeah. Psalm 27 verse 2. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He is the stronghold, David says. David, the praiser, has, has, he says, the Lord is a stronghold. Second thing that praise does is it makes the Lord your stronghold. It makes God your stronghold. What is a stronghold? It's a good question. A stronghold is where the, the armies would go. So if you think of King David, when the enemy was attacking and they were getting overrun, they would go into the stronghold. And the stronghold was impenetrable. You couldn't get into the stronghold. The stronghold is where they would strengthen themselves. The stronghold is where they would get supplies. The stronghold is where an armory was. And they could go there and get extra weapons, get a rocket launcher. See, the stronghold was a place where they could go and hide from the enemy and they could come back out with a renewed strength and a refreshment and they could go out and defeat the enemy. And that's amazing. King David says, the Lord is my stronghold. When we praise, when we develop a lifestyle of praise, what happens is it makes God our stronghold. All of a sudden, God establishes his stronghold in our life. Many people, their stronghold is the TV. I've had a hard day at work. I'm going to get home. I'm not going to praise. I'm going to go on the TV. I'm going to unwind with the TV. That's a You're using that as a stronghold. Yeah. You're trying to go there to get refreshment. Yeah. Many people, the stronghold is, food, is, is things like food. The stronghold is things like a holiday. The stronghold is things like a new car. The, the stronghold, uh, it can be so many things other than God. The problem with that is when you begin to get attacked and overrun by the enemy, you've got nowhere to get refreshment. You've got nowhere to get supply from Holy Spirit. It's like so many believers, they're good people. They love God. They love those around them, but they're feeding on donuts. 
That's what it's like. You're trying to get by on donuts instead of a big juicy steak. Bit of venison, fresh. So through the praise of children and infants, God says, he establishes a stronghold against our enemies. Through our praise, God establishes his stronghold in our life. I believe I have this conviction in my heart that if you become a radical praiser, you will never burn out. You will never get tired. You will never get weary. You will never get sad. You will never get depressed. Why? Because the Lord Jesus becomes the stronghold of your life. And when the enemy tries to come along and accuse you, he's silenced by the praises of infants and children. Come on. He's the stronghold. Wow. Four. Verse 2. When the wicked advance against me. Are you following me? Psalm 27 verse 2. When the wicked advance against me to devour me. In other words, when it looks like I'll be destroyed. That's what David's saying. When it looks like all hope is lost. Uh, Have you ever been in that situation? Maybe there's some people like that now. Financially, physically, in relationship. When it looks like all hope is lost. It is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Wow. David's saying a whole army can come against him. And it looks like in every eye of the natural realm that he's done for. But listen to him. The man of praise. It is my enemies. My foes. They're the ones. They're the ones who will stumble and fall. Not me. Not me. I love that. See, David's a man of praise. And this is the third thing that praise does to transform you. And this is amazing. I love this part. Praise brings a victorious mindset. Praise brings a victorious mindset. I'll say that again. Praise brings a victorious mindset. A lot of issues Christians face, a lot of issues people face is between the ears. It's a mindset. See, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says that as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. In other words, you can be one with Jesus Christ. You can, God can love you with all his heart. God's done all these amazing things for you, baptized in the Holy Spirit, access to, the, uh, access to all the gifts of the Spirit. You can have all of that. But as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. If you have a defeated mindset, you will never walk in victory. Praise unlocks a victorious mindset. Why? Because 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, it gets your eyes off the seen realm and gets your eyes onto the unseen realm. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18 says, we don't focus on what is temporary. We don't focus on the seen realm that is temporary, but we put our eyes and we focus on the unseen realm, on the eternal things of God. Come on. Some of you need to get, some of you need to stop looking at your life through your physical eyes and start looking at your life through your spiritual eyes. Oh, well, the boss doesn't like me at work. Oh, God, if I only had a new job, if I only had more money, if only I had a better partner. If only I had a house. If only, if only, if only. I'll be happy, God. I'm walking into work. I'm a bit sad today. You know, Eeyore. Victim mentality. Instead of going into the place thinking, Jesus, I'm one with you. Jesus, I'm going to magnify you today. I focus myself on you today, Lord. You're the mighty God. Your spirit is with me. Jesus, you live in me. You love me. You're for me. I walk in the power of Holy Spirit. I have full access to the resources of God. Come on. You would walk into your workplace and you would completely transform it. God calls you to be a light. Victorious mindset. Too many of us 
walk around believing lies about ourselves. Too many of us walk around depressed with anxiety. See, I can guarantee you a solution is maybe if you get your eyes off of yourself, off your own natural circumstances, off your own situation, and maybe just lift your eyes, get your eyes onto God and see who He is. Praise is a mindset shifter. When we praise God, what happens is he takes our little thoughts, he takes our thoughts and does a trade-off. He replaces it with his thoughts. He gives us the mind of Christ when we praise him. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. So it starts in the soul. I don't really feel like it, but soul Praise the Lord. Get into it. I don't feel like worshipping today. I'm a bit tired when I wake up this morning. I've got this problem going on. I've got this issue. But soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. And then where does it go? All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Wow. So it starts in the realm of the soul, but then it gets down into your spirit. See, many people, they think, well, I can't be bothered. Pray God, I've... I just don't feel like praising you today. I don't feel like boasting in you. I don't feel like raving about you. And no wonder you're dry inside, but you start in your soul, then it gets down into your spirit. All of a sudden, it brings life to you. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Forget not. Forget not. See, praise gets the focus off yourself onto God, and then you begin to realize the benefits. Many of you aren't walking in the benefits because you're not praising God. And your mind is so focused on every other issue. And you're not focused and meditating on the benefits, on the promises of God. Come on, too many of us walk around day after day after day, and we are, we are forgetting every single benefit that Jesus Christ has won for you. Come on. The benefits of God. He heals all our diseases. He, for, he forgives all your sins. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with love and compassion. He satisfies your desires with good things. And he renews your youth like the eagles. Come on. Some people have to get that scripture into you and begin to let God lead you into that experience. Forget not. Forget not. Don't get forgetful. I don't have time to talk about the power of your imagination. I wish I did. You see, many of us, we meditate on all the wrong things. And whatever you're focused on, that's what will be produced in your life. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So, of course, you're not seeing victory in your life because you're meditating on all your problems. You're meditating on all your sins of your past. You're meditating on everything that's wrong with you, everything that's wrong with your life. When you begin to focus on the promises of God, when you begin to meditate on the promises of God, when you get those into your imagination, your imagination is the birthing place of the promises of God to become manifest in your life. Your imagination isn't fantasy. Fantasy is getting something like a unicorn and trying to put that into practice. That's fantasy. But no, when you get the word of God, when you get his word into your imagination and you meditate upon that, all of a sudden something gets conceived within you and it shall come to pass. Amen? Amen. Come on. Praise brings a victorious mindset. That's amazing. Number four. Verse three now. Though an army besiege me, my heart, or you could translate that as mind, will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. It's amazing. A whole army, David's saying, can break out against him. He doesn't care. He won't fear. He could, he could see a whole war. All the chaos and evil that is in the world can break out and David's saying, even then I will be confident. I will not fear. This is the fourth thing that happens 
when you begin to praise God, when you become a radical praiser, worshipper and lover of God, it unlocks peace in your life. I love peace. Many people have absolutely no understanding what peace is. I'm very peaceful today. I'm very happy, very joyful. Peace isn't happiness. Peace isn't joy. Peace is something different. Jesus in Mark chapter 4 verse 39, he tells the disciples, jump in the boat, take me over to the other side of the lake. And he has a good snooze. Good on him. He's probably tired from ministry. And he's in the boat and a big storm breaks out, right? And the disciples, they're doing all the hard work. And all this, this whole storm, all the wind and the waves, and they're starting to come into the boat. And they're trying to, with their little buckets, trying to get it out. One of them probably got an oar and he's probably trying to get himself to get the lifeboat out. I don't know how big their boats were back then. But he's trying to do something. And Jesus is asleep. He's asleep. That's peace, is it not? Peace can sleep through the storm. Peace can sleep through the storm. When everything looks like it's going haywire, you still get a solid eight hours sleep. I like eight hours. You don't get two or three. You don't get anxious and depressed. No, peace brings a security to you. So the disciples, they yell at Jesus, Master, wake up. Don't you care if we're going to drown? Do you think Jesus cared? Of course he cared. What does he do? He gets up and he says to the storm, Peace, 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 be still. And what happened? It was still. Wow. See, the disciples had no peace. The disciples had a very low level of peace. And what happens when you have a low level of peace is any storm, any chaos that happens in the outside world will always get into you. And you'll be full of fear. You'll be full of anxiety. Peace is a weapon that God gives you against the chaos and the storms of life. The storms got into the disciples, but what happened to Jesus What was in Jesus, the peace in Jesus, got into the storm and stilled it. Wow. (laughs) Peace creates a wall. Peace creates a barrier in your life. Philippians, Paul says, Philippians 4, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, through prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, make your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding. What does that mean? It means I can't understand it. Transcends all understanding. Means you can't understand it. People can't understand it when you have the peace of God. People can't understand it when everything in your finances is going haywire, when when you've got a health problem and a health issue, you get the doctor's report. People can't understand it when you're not freaking out. That's peace. Peace is the storm isn't getting inside of you. Come on, we need to be a people of radical praise, a people who are radical lovers of God. Where when the storms come, where the chaos comes in our life, it never gets into you, it never penetrates you. Wow. That peace, it says in Philippians, will guard your heart and mind in Christ. And that word for guard is the Greek word for a garrison. A garrison it creates a wall. It creates a fortress around you that can't be penetrated. Some of you need that today. Praise brings a victorious mindset. Praise unlocks peace in our life. And this peace causes us to respond by faith rather than fear. So peace will always do two things. As you develop a lifestyle of praise... Peace determines your level of authority over the storm. If I don't have peace, then I don't have authority. I have more peace in my life. I'm able to operate in more more authority. And peace also determines your response to the storm. Peace determines whether you respond by faith or fear. So we need peace. Amen. Amen. 
I need the peace of God. I need to praise him. I need to worship him in the midst of chaos. I need to worship him, develop this lifestyle in my life where I'm a radical praiser because it releases a peace within me. We had the, the, the devil come along and tried to take out my mum for a year and a half and she was struggling with a health issue. And I believe I'm sharing this because I think this will help people. Most families, most people in that time should regress. That's what happens. A trial comes along in life and people get sidetracked. People go back a step or two or three or ten. But see, this storm comes along and I learned in that time to praise God. I learned to strengthen myself in the Lord as David did. And I look back on that time and it is incredible what God did because our family, myself, but also our family, we progressed rather than regressed. Come on. Come on. Someone needs to hear that today. That when you praise God in the storm, you actually progress. It's like Jesus in the wilderness and he comes out of the trial in the power of Holy Spirit. He went in led by the Spirit. It was, it was from the devil, but Holy Spirit knew he would get the victory. And he comes out in the power of Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember going into that hospital day after day after day, declaring, taking authority over the storm, not letting the sickness, not letting the hopelessness, the fear get inside of me, but letting what was in me get out into it. And I can guarantee you when you do that, you will see victory in your life. It will transform you. Praise transforms you. Come on. Many people, their theology would change. Many people, their relationship with God would, with God would be fractured. They would think, well, maybe it's not God's will to heal. Well, I'm not seeing it. Maybe, you know, what happens, see, this is what happens during those times, is that people uh, put the characteristics of the devil onto God. I see that. People go through trials and struggles and they take the characteristics of the devil and say that that's God. That's what happens when you don't have peace in the storm. Your theology gets mixed up. My head, David says in Psalm 27, move to verse 6. We've got to move along quickly. My head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, so that's God's presence. In God's presence, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Wow. David, the man of praise, says that this is what he learned. As I praise God, my head is exalted above my enemies. Do you know what that means? That means God delivered David. But not only did God deliver David... God turned David into a deliverer. God exalted David above every single enemy. See, when you learn to praise God, not only does God bring deliverance in your life, but God turns you into a deliverer. Amen. Not only does he bring you victory, but he teaches you then to walk in victory. It goes from being dependent upon God. God, I need you. I bless you. I love you. I'm dependent upon you. It goes from surviving, just getting by each day, being dependent upon God, to partnering with God. That's what happens when you praise. That's what happens when you worship Him. That's what happens when you say, God, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. I praise you. I boast in you. You are King, Jesus. What happens when you do that? You are turned into a deliverer. King David, he started in the sheepfold. He learned to praise in the sheepfold in the secret place, as you learn to praise in the, secret, in the secret place. God then takes him and he takes out a bear and a lion, getting a bit bigger now. So he's learned to praise in the secret place and now he, he takes out a bear and a lion. God delivered me from the paw of the bear and the mouth of the lion. So now it's getting a bit bigger. He's learning to praise God's delivered him from that. Then he goes to Goliath. 
and he takes out Goliath. So God delivers him from Goliath, does he not? Then what happens is David, he thinks, wow, this is great. I'm going to be anointed as king. But all of a sudden, King Saul goes after him. And David's on the run. And in 1 Samuel chapter 22, he's in the cave of Adullam. And all these discontented men, it says, 400 family members, people who are in debt, people who are bitter towards the king, uh, towards Israel, people who are bitter towards God, they come and spend time with David in a cave. So David's learnt to praise and he's learnt that God's his deliverer. 400 men go with him in a cave and what happens? They're transformed into deliverers themselves. Come on. See, they get into a cave. They get into a cave with the worshipper and all of a sudden they turn into mighty warriors for God's kingdom. Wow. See, when you learn to praise in the secret place, God will reward you in open. When you learn to praise and develop this lifestyle, all of a sudden God will not only deliver you, but he turns you into a deliverer yourself. You become the solution for people in your workplace. You become the solution for the person who's sick down the street. You become the solution for the, for the low poverty level in your area. God turns you into a deliverer. It goes from being dependent upon God to all of a sudden, I'm partnering with God. (sighs) David gets out of that cave and he delivers the whole kingdom of Israel. He defeats every single Philistine in the area. Moses couldn't do that. Joshua didn't do that. None of the judges did that. But David did. The man of praise did. David was the man of praise and he delivered a whole nation. Come on. Come on. Can we be a place of radical praises? Could we be a place where we we don't really worry about what those around us think, but we start focusing on God, you are worthy of my praise. God, I'm going to radically praise and love you because I know when I do that, you transform me. And not only do you transform me, but you transform those around you. Your praise can bring the breakthrough to the person next to you. It's a revelation for someone in here. You're probably holding back thinking, oh, what are they thinking? Maybe if you stood out and praised, all of a sudden they would too and they'd see deliverance in their life. We call upon the name of the Lord because he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Is he not worthy of our praise? We call upon his name because he has so much worth in our life. And no matter what circumstance you're in, God says, I want you to grow into a radical praiser. I want you to move your body a little bit. I want you to raise your voice a little louder. I want you to start focusing on me. Begin boasting in the Lord. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish with a song of praise. See, I've set you up for it, haven't I? Yeah. And see, if you're down here, that's fine. If you're down here, we just want you to go up here. It's about growing. You've seen what happens when you praise God. Transformation follows you. So if you start from down here, that's fine. Just go a bit higher. If you're here, then go a little bit higher than that. Come on, be that person who's a little bit annoying to be around. I like those people because they're different. We need those people in our life. People who will make us feel uncomfortable with their praise and worship. Yeah, people who who will be so erratically in love with God that you're like, I don't know about this person. That's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. Because I want to be transformed into a deliverer. I want to be that person who my friend can come to and receive a touch from God. 